In WWE 2K22, we hosted the most prestigious tournament that my GM has ever seen. We took 16 of the most popular jobbers and matched them up against one another in a scintillating tournament to ultimately crown the king of the jobbers. And now, it's that time of year again. With even more at stake this time round, we're ready to begin the Jobbers World Cup in 2023. Will Jerry Hattrick claim gold after coming up short in the main event of WrestleMania? Or will his age have simply caught up to him? What about Kyle Slickman, the once undisputed MyGM GOAT whose career has noticeably declined after his loss in the final of this very competition 12 months ago? Can he redeem himself, or will someone rise up to the occasion like Red Monsoon did, who took his Jobbers World Cup win and rode that momentum all the way to Hollywood, never to be seen in a WWE ring ever again? There's a lot on the line here, and a lot of wrestling to get through, so let's start by having a look at the tournament tree. To lay out the rules of the tournament before we start, we have 16 jobbers and it'll be a knockout format, meaning that if you lose a match, you are eliminated from the competition completely. The first round will be a regular 1v1 match, then the quarterfinals is a tables match, the semis are a TLC match, and the final will take place inside Hell in a Cell. So here's your first round of matches, and we've got some incredibly interesting pairings going up against each other, including Heath Manhattan and Broderick throwing their tag team belts aside as they face each other in a singles competition. It'll be interesting to see how respectful they are of each other, or could this put an end to their iconic friendship? We've also got the man who held the NXT title for the majority of the jobbers only run, Eddie Pop, and he's squaring up against Stacked McSlacks in a fight that really should see Eddie coming out on top. Then, an old rivalry is reignited as Chuck McWagon puts Kyle Slickman to the sword yet again. Kyle has a lot to prove here after Chuck picked up a fair few wins in their previous feud, not to mention that he'll be out to right some wrongs from last year's competition as well. And in perhaps one of the greatest returns in all of WWE history, Jackson Smooth has been medically cleared from his six-year injury to get back in the ring for the Jobbers World Cup. However, he faces the man who carried NXT on his back for an entire season, Jerry Hattrick. Will Jackson suffer another horrendous injury, or will Jerry's old age catch up to him and allow Smooth to pick up a shock win? As for the other matches, we have a returning Tim Burr taking on Argus the Great, Silence, who embarrassingly went out in the first round last year, faces Adrian Williams, then the Red Flame makes his much-anticipated return against newcomer Cash Suplex, and Captain Grog takes on Triton. Plenty of quality matches lie ahead, and with the competition fiercer than ever this year, who will come out on top? We start off with Tim Burr against Argus the Great in a match that not many have been talking about in the build-up, but it actually delivered an exciting show. In the end though, it was Argus the Great who overpowered Tim Burr and put on an impressive display to secure himself a spot in the quarterfinals. Next up was the longest reigning champion in NXT's history, Eddie Pop matching up against an underrated superstar in Stacked McSlacks. This one looked all said and done from the start, with Eddie absolutely dominating Stacked, but McSlacks wasn't going to go down without a fight. After a while of Stacked actually taking it to the champion, fans started to wonder, could this be a huge upset? After all, it is a knockout tournament, anything can happen, and Stacked was really putting up a fight. However, once all was said and done, Eddie got the upper hand once again and set Stacked up for the pop bomb, and this looked over. But McSlacks reversed it into a pin, and even though Eddie kicked out, he stayed on him to hit his finisher. But Eddie kicked out again. Stacked gave it everything he had and it wasn't enough but he still had one more move in him. He hauled Eddie up and planted him, and just like that, Stacked McSlacks pulled off one of the biggest upsets we'll likely see in this tournament. Now it's time for Broderick to face Heath Manhattan, the two men that dethroned Jerry and Kyle on the grandest stage of them all, bound by not only gold, but legacy as well. And it starts off anything but respectfully, as Heath immediately takes the fight to Broderick. This then set the tone for the rest of the fight. This one was now a brawl between two men who were all-out competitors, and there's no room for friendship in the Jobbers World Cup. They traded moves back and forth, and there didn't seem to be a clear winner at all. That is until Broderick snapped. He was not holding back. Move after move, strike after strike, he was out to hurt Heath, and the crowd could only watch uncomfortably. Eventually, he hauled him up and planted him to the mat to secure the win. As he was celebrating in front of a stunned gym hall, he screamed, You made me do this, Heath. You made me do this. Broderick is our third quarterfinalist. And that brings us nicely on to the next bout. The winner of this match will face a deranged Broderick in the quarters, but I don't think that'll phase either of these men. Chuck McWagon and Kyle Slickman have seen it all. 
They're two of the toughest competitors in this competition, and they showed it in this match. After what seemed like an age of violent strikes, gruelling submission holds, and hard-hitting moves, both men were really feeling it. But there's only one man that rises up on an occasion like this one. A man that's overcome all of the adversity that life has thrown at him. Kyle pulls Chuck up onto his shoulders and hits him with a Kyle driver. This one's over, and Kyle is ready to get his revenge on Broderick. The fifth match of the first round saw Silence match up against Adrian Williams. After Silence's performance last year, nobody even expects him to get offense in this time round. But then again, he's fighting another nobody in Adrian Williams, a man that stepped straight out of reality TV into the ring. So it could be closer than you think. The rather ironically silent crowd reaction must have lit a flame in the scrawny mime, as he obliterated Adrian. It was just a beatdown, and reportedly after he was pinned, Adrian tore up his contract and applied for every reality TV show that he could. Silence didn't need words to make a statement, he did his talking in the ring. After witnessing that masterclass from Silence, the crowd were invested once again. And what better way to satisfy their appetite than our next match? The returning Jackson Smooth, who doctors said should never step in a ring again just one month ago, versus Jerry Hattrick, who will need to pick himself up after his WrestleMania defeat and prove to everyone why he's still the leader of the pack. Predictably, Jerry had the upper hand, pulling out all the tricks in his veteran arsenal. Jackson looked like he had a one-way ticket back to the emergency room, but he certainly wasn't going to lay down, not after being out for as long as he's been. Smooth used every bit of fight that he had in him to hit Jerry with some big moves, and even looked like he was going to hit him with his finisher, until Jerry reversed it. But with the newfound hope that Jackson got from this, he found a way to get Jerry up and plant him on the map for what might be one of the most memorable returns in WWE history. What does Jerry do from here? He has to redeem himself soon, or his career will quickly spiral out of control. The next two matches between the Red Flame and Cash Suplex and Captain Grog and Triton saw Cash Suplex make easy work of an aging Red Flame to advance, whilst Triton sent Captain Grog sailing to grab the last spot in the quarterfinals. On to the quarterfinals now, and things are already heating up. Stacked McSlacks pulled off a huge upset in the first round against Eddie Pop, but was Argus the Great too much for him? Argus unfortunately dominated this one and put a swift end to Stacked's unlikely run in this competition. Then it was time for a crunch match. Kyle was out for revenge, and Broderick had a point to prove to Manhattan that he could do this without him. Kyle wasted no time, using one of his many takedown techniques he'd learned from his time in security to gain the upper hand on Broderick. And he wasn't done there. Slickman proceeded to put Broderick through his worst nightmare. Multiple heavy strikes landed, and Broderick was in trouble. His mind was clearly still on his tattered relationship with Heath, and he'd underestimated the resentment that Kyle had for him after pinning him at WrestleMania. Each punch had serious venom behind it, but somehow Broderick stayed in it, and even set up a table ready to put Slickman through. Surely he wasn't going to beat him again? No. Kyle used every ounce of ring awareness that he had to reverse Broderick's move and send him flying through a table set up in the corner. And just like that, Kyle buried a lot of demons. After Silence issued a warning to the entire locker room in the first round, he was now up against Jackson Smooth, the man who needs this win to revitalize his career. But sadly for Jackson, it wasn't looking good. Something had awoken within Silence, a rage that we haven't seen the likes of yet, and he took it all out on Smooth. It was carnage, multiple table shots, big moves, and eventually he injured Jackson yet again by planting him through a table. Poor Jackson is facing 37 years on the sideline with a broken hip, back, and neck. And as he lay there in horrific pain, Silence simply laughed. What sort of monster have we created? In the Battle of the Giants for the last remaining semi-final spot, Triton managed to overcome the formidable cash suplex in what can only be described as a slugfest. Can Triton be the man to put a halt to Silence's reign of terror? Or is he simply his next victim? Since taking down Broderick in the quarterfinals, would Kyle Slickman have the same burning desire going into his match with Argus the Great in the semis? Well, it appears that his focus has moved on from issues with other wrestlers, and he's solely focused on redemption in this competition. Argus the Great has been quietly impressive so far, and unloads a wide range of offense on Slickman, but he's seen this all before. The contests seem fairly even, with both Argus and Kyle getting up the ladder and unlocking a few sections of the briefcase. But with one section left to unlock, it was neck and neck. They traded blows at the top of the ladder, and whoever knocked the other one down first was almost guaranteed to win. 
And with Slickman's vast knowledge of mixed martial arts, he manages to get a foot up and knock him down. This left Kyle free to unlock the briefcase and secure himself a spot in the final for a second year running. Surely Kyle wouldn't let another opportunity at gold slip through his fingertips again. Well, there was one small issue, in the form of silence. A man who's answered all of his critics and unapologetically destroyed every opponent he's faced so far. But he still had to get through Triton first. Without a doubt, Triton was putting up a better fight than the challengers before him, exchanging blows with Silence and even hitting him with some massive moves. But Silence wasn't going to give up. He's got this far, and he knows that he can't let his momentum go to waste now. Triton found himself at the top of the ladder, unlocking a fair bit of the briefcase. Until Silence struck. Like a python, he slithered up the ladder and started raining blows down on him. Eventually, Triton couldn't take it. And as he crashed down to the mat from the top of the ladder, he could only look up in disbelief as Silence slowly unlocked the briefcase and took his place in the final. This match was always going to be brutal, but we could have never expected it to be these two competitors. Kyle was once a dejected figure, going on losing streaks and seemingly past his best, still suffering from the injuries that he faced in the last Jobbers World Cup final. And as for Silence, this was his redemption arc. He had a chance to show everyone why they were wrong to doubt him, and my word did he do just that. He's destroyed everyone in his path to get to this moment, and it's hard to see him throwing it away from here. Will Kyle right the wrongs of last year's contest? Or will Silence complete one of the greatest underdog stories we've ever seen? It all took place inside Hell in a Cell. With the Jobbers title on the line, Kyle went straight to work, unleashing a lot of offense on Silence right out of the blocks. No man has ever scared Kyle Slickman, not even the sadistic mime stood in front of him. But it wasn't long before Silence came back, and came back with vengeance. He didn't want to just beat Kyle, he wanted to hurt him, putting him in excruciating submission holds and hitting him with sledgehammers. It wasn't looking good, but Kyle knew that he had to keep fighting until he couldn't fight anymore. Eventually, Slickman started to turn it round, hitting Silence with some of his signature moves. You could sense the anger within him as he threw down multiple chair shots onto his head and body. Kyle was going to go to any length he could to come out on top here. But Silence is a different beast. He took the chair shots and stood right back up. Now even more angry than ever before. Some reports have said that fans in attendance noticed the slightest bit of fear in Kyle's eyes. Something that we've never witnessed before. And it was easy to tell why. Silence hit him with his signature triple German suplex and nearly got the win. And as if that wasn't enough, he then locked in his finisher, the face paint remover. It was surely over for Kyle as he lay helpless in the ring. He'd already gone through a war and now he was simply being tortured. But Kyle did not give in. In an inhuman feat of willpower and strength, Kyle grabbed Silence's hand and released the hold. The crowd didn't know how to react. Surely this wasn't possible, no man could be this tough. And before they could even get their heads around it, he hit it. A perfectly executed Kyle Driver right onto the nose of Silence. This one's over. One, two, Silence kicks out. Not one human on the face of this planet has ever kicked out of a Kyle Driver. What was he gonna have to do to put Silence away? And that's when it dawned on him. No amount of sledgehammer blows or chair shots were going to put this man down. There's only one weapon that's strong enough. The heel of the dress shoes that Kyle has worn to work for the last 18 years. As soon as it clicked, he hit it. A slick kick right to the Temple of Silence and he was out. One, two, three. And just like that, Kyle Slickman was on top of the jobbers once again. The undisputed GOAT has returned, and not only has he taken out anyone in his path, but he's also redeemed his WrestleMania loss to Broderick along the way. In the most fitting circumstances possible, Kyle Slickman is your new 2023 Jobbers World Champion. If you want to see how these Jobbers perform in a 25 week season in MyGM, go ahead and click the link on screen now, I promise you won't be disappointed.